name is Chris Metaverso. This is my theory or proposal or explanation for current failures and attempts to varying levels of these of these uh, four fundamental factors. A very pure and abstract level would be you have zero, positive, negative, and one. So extremely uh, abstract level there. Let's assign, let's uh, first we need to understand this graph. We'll write it as an equation in Boolean algebra. So we would assign letters I to one, and on top here we'll let's go with O over here for positive and over here for negative and then we write that as a boolean algebra equation so all of these are anded together they they you can't have you can't pull one out of them they all 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 of them have to be uh, together uh, uh, present together they're all interdependent So the question is, what's so special about gravity? Why, why, is, why is gravity uh, special? Uh, why is it so difficult? Why is it so weak? Why, why is it when you try to integrate gravity into the other three fundamental forces, um, it, it's, you know, it kind of comes in there and it doesn't, I mean, it's not, you know, it doesn't work. Why is that? Well, with my four fundamental factors, my explanation of this, my interpretation of, of this concept, or this uh, paradigm, if you will, is that these are all force-mediated particles, or they're, I mean, they're, they're forces that are mediated by subatomic particles. So you've got your photon for the electromagnetic force, and you've got your um, uh, gluons, and your, the, you know, the weak, uh, nuclear uh, decay particle, and all that good stuff. And so these are all over here. This, on another level of uh, abstraction, is the micro or the realm of quantum mechanics. Okay. So these forces are here. Gravity. On the other hand, what I am saying is the same thing that Einstein was saying. Gravity is different. Gravity does not belong over here in the realm of quantum mechanics. In fact, you could, you could even perhaps say that over here, you have your macro, and you would have the realm of the quantum, or the qualitatively different emergent properties or qualities is one way of thinking about it. But over here, you have gra gravity is over here. Now here's another, uh, a little bit more concrete level to these four fundamental factors. This is space. Flat space as defined by an isotropic uh, vector equilibrium matrix. Flat space, nothing in it. No, no existence. Over here is mass. Mass. Over here, energy. And over here, of course, time. So you have space, mass, energy and time. Can't have one without the other. They all, they all define each other. It may be that because of this, gravitons do not exist. String theory is wrong. I mean, it's a, it, it's a good step, but it's not the destination, obviously. Um, you could think of it like a stepping stone. Uh, but then 
perhaps the path isn't a straight line. And it's a stepping stone that's over here. And if you keep going in that direction, you're not going to arrive at the destination that you want to go to. So it is even possible that if you had a whole new field based on these qualums, that gravity would be a qualum, dark energy could be a qualum, and dark matter could be a qualum. An emergent property. An emergent property from when you have enough matter and energy in the same place for the same for, for in a long enough place for a long enough time you begin to have an effect which is experiences gravity so it may be that some of these things that we simply haven't found or like graviton magnetic monopoles tachyons hidden dimensions it may be that you're trying, you're trying to, as, to paraphrase Feynman, you're trying to put something together that simply doesn't belong, that nature never intended to have put together. I'm kind of hashing that up, but, I, but that's basically what Feynman was getting at. So, if we use this, we may see that it explains a lot of what we're missing in modern physics.